This week on Marae, the battle for Waiariki. I think Rangatahi would be more inclined to vote if they knew the impact that their vote had on um, their future. And a modern take on needle and thread. Kei ngā kōkō tataki o te wao tapu nui a tāne, tēnā rā koutou katoa. Tau mai anō rā ki te pai kōrero a marae. Waiariki, and that's my electorate, by the way. It <laughs> may be the seat that defines the future of the Māori Party. Yes, as we continue our march to the election, we're taking a closer look at this hotly contested seat. The Waiariki electorate covers the Bay of Plenty from Cape Runaway to the east to Waihi Beach, extending to Rotorua, Whakatane, uh, Taupo, and includes Kawero, Opotiki, and Te Puke. Sitting MP is Te Uroro Flavel for the Māori Party, and he's facing a tough challenge from Annette Sykes for the Mana International. Party. And new contenders Rawari Waititi for the Labour Party and Pat Spellman for the New Zealand Independent Coalition Party. First stop, Tauranga Moana. Kua rehi ta koe mō te kōwhiringa pōti. Ai, ko tēnei taku i tau tua tahi. Ka tuku pōti koe uh, i tēnei tau. Mm, te rā pia. Kia ora pai te waiariki. Um, kia ora whakaaro, ko matua te ururoa te tangata mo tērā. E hia hia nei e au. Kia whakanui, kia whakamana i tō tātou reo. Mehe mea ka uru atu a te ururoa flebu. On the rugby field, it's all about empowering the young ones. I am a mum and I want the best for my daughter, um, education, health-wise. Ore Colin! Kia ora te kaupapa whakahirahira mo tēnei hāpori. Whanau ngā tanga. What type of person would you want representing you for this Māori seat? Wairiki. Can they bring back um, Matariri now? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the jungle. Next, we head east to the town of Opotiki, where opportunities are limited. Things are not cheap anymore. Life is a little bit hard, struggling. Uh, thank God, Tangaroa's got us the uh, best place. We always can provide for our partner. What's important for the people of Oportiki? A lot more jobs, because the only jobs that are around here pretty much are the seasonal ones. Do you guys have enough opportunities here? No, not in this town. There's a lot of teenagers just roaming around doing nothing. But to be really honest, I'm just too tied up with mahi eh, at the moment, so I really haven't got time to think about that kind of thing. I wish I did. In the Tuhoi stronghold of Taniatua, some have lost faith in New Zealand politics. Are you enrolled to vote? No, I don't vote at all because I feel that sometimes our vote is um, not validated and I just feel it's just a waste of time. And there are those who still hope current Māori MPs will deliver. At the southern end of Lake Taupo is Turangi, where Māori are more focused on providing for their whānau. How do whānau survive here? A lot of the whānau that I know around Turangi really survive on um, hunting and also chat for she. Why is it that Fano are having to survive on hunting and fishing? Because there's not much um, work opportunities for our Fano around the Tūrangi area. I like to see that the licences are, uh, are lowered down a little bit just so it makes it easier for our community. Obviously, dressing for the environment is a given for locals here. There's a few artworks on the bridge over here. We really need something for our kids. We need to put something in place for them, you know, where they can concentrate on, you know, taking their mind off doing something bad and putting their mind into doing something good. Last stop, Rotorua, where you'll find the most activity from Māori voters. Ka tuku pōti koe te nei tau. Ae, ae. Koina te mea nui. Mō tātou katoa, ngā tāngata e tāia na ki te pōti a tātou rangatahi hoki. 
ma rātau hoki mā ngā pakeke mai ngā mātua e kōrero atu ki o rātau tamariki. Ko ai e kai poti e hekea ana koe, kia toa. Kai tete hi taha a koe mea nei a ko taku matua, a rā ko te ururoa. I te mea he hononga whakapapa kai reira, hoi anō ko aloa ia e tū ana hei a... Hei toka tū ki ngā ngaru huhua o te iwi Māori, o te iwi Pākehā no hoki. Mō hio koe, ko wai ngā kai tono pōtisi mō te tūru waiariki? Ai ki toku nei mō hio, au kei te mō hio e mō ngā mea rongonui me ki, ngā kanohi kitea, a kare kore koe tahi kare i te mō hio hoki. What do you think will get Rangatahi more interested to vote? So I think Rangatahi would be more inclined to vote if they knew the impact that their vote had on um, their future. There's different campaigns that are happening at the moment, especially on uh, social media. I don't think they're quite cracking it just yet. What would you like to see happen for the Māori community here in Rotorua? Oh, just more things for the kids, for the younger ones growing up and, yeah, put more things for like the old people in that, make sure they're all taken care of, warm and everything. Well, as the young ones have got jobs to get into or something, so they're not out on the street robbing. Word from the wife to the candidates, focus on the next generation of voters. Me haere rātou i wainga nui ngā rangatahi. Me kite ngā rangatahi i a rātou. Me hui rātou mo ngā rangatahi. Kia tono atu kia rātou haere mai, Whakarongo mai ki aku kōrero, mā kauta hoki he homai he kōrero, mā tātou katoa. I love that hot pool interview, hilarious. All right, um, so joining Willie and me are retiring National MP Tohenare and Taranaki-based columnist uh, Dion T uh, Tuta. Kia ora koutou. Dion, we've said that it's going to be a tough fight. How tough do you think it's going to be in that seat? Uh, well, it's going to come down to the two, well, my view anyway, I think it'll probably come down to Tūruro and Annette. Of course, you've got Rauri. Waititi there and uh, Pat Spellman, who I don't know anything about, actually. But um, Tūruroa is, you know, as the leader of the Māori Party, understands that, um, you know, if he doesn't win, that could be the end of the Māori Party, and that's a that's a significant hurdle to face. So he's out there working really hard. Annette as well also knows that with the the how close it was last time that she stands a real chance. So yeah, I mean, I think it was like 1,800 between the two. Something of them. like that. Yeah. So it's going to be. This is for me is probably the one to watch. The the real the, of all of the Maori um, electorates. This is the one to watch for me. Okay, um, and yeah. and so who is Pat Spellman? Dion just said we don't we don't Pat know much about Spellman him. Pat is a uh, radio announcer down in uh, Bay of Plenty in Tauranga. Um, he's running with Brendan's party, the New Zealand Coalition of Independence, or whatever they call themselves. Um, has got as much chance as. Um, Australia had last night against you. <laughs> and, and a bit of a wasting there, you think, too, at the end of it. Um, a clutch of settlements lately, Willie. We've had uh, Ngai Te Rangi, Ranginui, some Arawa Hapu. And of course, there's, there's two hoi. Do settlements have any impact on an election? Not really, because um, National does them, and Fin Nation's doing a good, uh, good job. Labor does them, did them, Cullen did a good job. Uh, this, uh, so it's not really going to affect uh, anything in that seat. Spellman, as Toe said, he'll get about 200 votes, if he's lucky. Uh, but it's a, it's a fascinating seat to watch because you've got the warrior queen. You know, Annette is a warrior queen and she's getting hundreds at her hui, but the hundreds don't necessarily translate in terms of the votes on the night. If she can motivate and activate the, the, the youth down there, she's got a real chance. Well, she's, the... she's really focusing on women, isn't oh, she? Oh, no. It's, it's, it's wonderful. I'm, I've been watching the campaign. A hell of a campaign down there. And, and uh, women do turn out to vote. That's right, but she's up against the conservative sort of vote of Te Arawa who uh, um, gravitate towards Te Urudu, uh, but I wouldn't count her out at all. You know, it's, as Dion said, it's a seat to watch, but also I watch Waititi too, because he's the outsider, and, and these two could, uh, could, uh, could almost knock each other out because they're that, they're that close. I mean, he's an outsider, he's a roughie. No, he needs to lose the hat. Yeah, he needs to <laughs> lose the hat. Yeah. He needs to stop wandering around and, and playing the cowboy. <laughs> I mean, you know, that was Dover's bag. You know, and we should leave it to history. I, I, I think it is one of the seats to watch. Yeah. Um, but I, um, like I said last week, if I had a lazy 20 bucks, it'd go on uh, to the door winning.
Okay. Um, just a, a side note, we haven't heard much, Dion, from um, Hone. So we see, you know, Annette's going to be in this, this tough fight. Not much from the mana side of the internet mana party. Why do you think that is? Good question. Uh, <laughs> really good question. I don't well, know. let me put it to the panel. I mean, do, you, do you guys have any thoughts I, on that? I, I, um, I, I think the, the, the worry for Annette is that the, the, the brand of mana mm. has been tarnished with the, the internet uh, mana uh, part of, uh, of the campaign. I, I actually think that, that people will turn off. I think people have turned off. You've seen a lot of pe young people go to internet mana uh, mm. booze-ups, um, but they're not, they're not registered. They don't, they don't vote. The key thing here is getting people to vote for so you. So are you yeah. saying that, that, the, that mana is keeping its head down? To I not be tarnished, he's saying, he's tarnished saying, he's saying the brand is tarnished. Oh, I say, yeah, I and I'm saying he's talking a load of rubbish. Um, but it'd be that's because, you, <laughs> because but that's you. he's talking a load of rubbish because young people are gravitating towards no, uh, not. internet mana. They're excited by Free it. Beer. They like all the internet stuff, despite all the right wing rubbish that Toe and his mates are trotting out. This is probably oh. uh, this is the sort of you know the old style. I'll give you, know, you a bet I'll give you a bet now. You'll lose. That, that <laughs> Tudor wins the seat. The, I'm, I'm not saying Tudor won't win. Oh now. Oh, okay. But in terms of the party vote for internet mana, you can see it going through the roof at the moment. And we're talking minimum 3%, maybe 5%. Young people like <laughs> it. They like the internet, despite these old fogies like Toe oh. trying to talk them down. Have you got a Twitter? Yeah. Have you got a Twitter? No, I don't do Twitter. Oh, you don't, don't do, do that. All right, guys. We Mainly have to, no, no, we have to <laughs> leave it there. We have to leave it there. But right. you are going to get Bring another chance. You are going to get another chance very soon. Scotty will be back with you guys uh, just a bit later in the program. Scotty. Yes, I'm not looking forward to it. And now, ko tahi wiki ko pahure i te putanga mai o te puka puka a Nikki Haga, ko Dirty Politics te ingoa. Me te aha e raru tonu ana a John Key i ngā heitara e pūrero ake ana i taua puka puka rā. He ai ki te tokomaha o ngā uri Māori i tai atu ki te marae o tūranga waewae mo te koronaihana tuawaru o ki ngi tū heitia, auwe taukuri e. Pale, 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 politician. Can you make a right decision for all of us? For all of us. A gathering of political parties outside Tūranga Waiwai Marae. Hard to pick the left from the right here when they're all clad in black, with an exception. But even outside the gates of this Kingitanga stronghold, the Prime Minister couldn't escape the barrage of questions regarding leaked emails to Whale Oil blog. But it could be seen as a temporary truce between the embattled Prime Minister and the opposition, as they walk side by side onto the marae flanked by the Māori MPs. And no doubt, momentary relief for John Key. Here, marae politics rules and the media were shut out, a move supported by their MP. Nā runga i te tikanga o te marae tērā, so me waihotia mā te marae anō hei whakārohia a rātou ake tikanga mō ngā whakahairetanga. The Māori Party sticking to their mandate of not buying into a war of words and dirty politics. Hari te mea ka pā mai ki a māta o te Pāti Māori, te tikanga ia, nā koa hā, ko, wā, tōna mutanga ko ngā hāngai tonu te titiro ki te mahi kei mui te aroa, kaua ki kaupapa ke, ki ngā kūrakuraku, ngā amu amu, ngā kōhete hete a tētahi ki tētahi. And this Labour candidate could find himself in between a rock and a hard place. And those with the power of the vote are not letting dirty politics get in the way of what they want. But just how long will the power of the vote for a voice hold out against the momentum and distraction of dirty politics?
Well, joining me now is Shane Bradbrook, former director of Te Reo Marama, a Māori anti-smoking organisation. And Nikki Haga claims in his book uh, that that organisation was a target of attack politics since 2009. Now, you've read the book. What do you make of it? Well, I think all it does is confirm uh, that for us there was collusion behind the scenes. We knew there was a link with uh, the tobacco industry via Carrick Graham. Uh, when Slater started his attacks on us, we could see the linkage well and truly. All this does is confirm. That's what it is about. It just confirms that that was happening. So Te Reo Marama lost its funding in 2009. Now Cameron Slater says that that was uh, not because of his attack blocks, but because of yours and the organisation's accountability. I and mean, what do you make of that? Oh, I think he's completely wrong. I think we are accountable. We had public funding. Uh, we were audited. Uh, we welcomed any audit that came through. Uh, we accepted it. But when you cut to the chase, the real story came down to uh, further collusion that goes beyond Slater and uh, Carrick Graham. It's like the attacks that followed us from the Ministry were more around the travel, for example, that we took. It was nothing to do with actually the organisation's um, uh, ability, accountability, um, production out there, meeting its uh, outcomes. There was no issue about that. Well, there was, I mean, but there was a little bit, wasn't it? In the 2007 audit that you mentioned, there are a raft of recommendations about how the organisation sure. could perform better. One of them, for example, was that you as director were signing off on your own expenses. No, that's not true. Uh, actually, the way we did that was the, the board actually were well aware of anything being signed off and it went to an independent accountant. So, uh, no, that's not true. So, there were, But there were, uh, there were other but, issues of you know, yeah, uh, uh, attaching financial reports, for example, failing to produce resources for Ash and Smoke Free uh, and failing to record extensively on approving budgets. You know, everything was all, all, all above board. And, in fact, one of the things I'm really clear about is that you have to welcome audits. Uh, I think they're a good thing. They make your organisation uh, more accountable, but also more effective. Um, I have but no issue stacking that But when you have this that level up. of recommendations, sure, doesn't, sure. It, doesn't it make you vulnerable to attack like this? Of course it does. But then at the same time, what we did was the high priority areas within that audit were dealt with within a matter of a month. Um, and we set in play um, a six month programme to pull everything together and that's fine but I think they should be welcomed not criticised I think they're a good thing. So $77,000 yep. over three years on travel now you mentioned the travel yourself I mean yeah. uh, was it extensive did it feel extensive to you at the time? Personally, Do you understand it, the criticism? Personally it is extensive when you're having to put basically so much time travelling however the reality of that was we were again transparent put that out there in all our six monthly reports uh, ironically, while being criticised about using taxpayers' money, actually 95-97% uh, of that was paid for offshore. Um, and also I'm sitting there alongside Ministry of Health officials at all of these meetings. So they were using taxpayers' money, actually I wasn't. So it's quite clear for me that, yeah sure, come and attack us, but when you turn it around and you read what's in dirty politics, you realise why those attacks come aboard. We were a direct threat to the tobacco industry. And at the end of the day, the processes that we ran and the campaigns that we ran, actually, we won. Smoke Free 2025 is in play. We actually won at the end. We of the have day. to wrap. Very quickly, Cameron Slater said he was tempted to come on this morning because he wanted to have a face-to-face -face with you. Sure. Would you have wanted that? Oh, sure. Look, What would you have uh, said? Your key message? I think the key message really is that he gets paid. He's like a paid prostitute of the tobacco industry. That's all he is. He has no credibility in my eyes. OK, we have to leave it there. So, thank you so much. That's Shane Bradbrook. OK, back to our panel now. It's been a huge week in politics, boys, but Dion, has John Key been caught lying? He's been caught in a compromising situation. I mean, um, <coughs> you know, the issue about the OAA release regarding the SIS material, um, you know, it's the SIS. Um, and then for the, the Prime Minister to say, well, I don't, you know, I didn't, I wasn't personally aware of it, it went to my office, I find that quite... Uh, quite an extraordinary sort of position given the, the sort of um, the seriousness of the issue the political nature of that 
of that attachment uh, was, yeah, so he's certainly been, that's a difficult one to explain away. Um, I'm not going to say whether he's a liar or not, but he's, um, it's certainly compromising um, or difficult to explain. Yeah. A lot of this has come out because of, you know, social media and things like that, you know, emails being hacked, Twitter accounts, etc., etc. Cameron, Cameron Slater has criticised you in the past on his political blog there, uh, Tau Henare. Uh, you're active on Facebook and Twitter. Is social media going to have a big influence and impact on this election? On the election, I think I think it will. I think it's uh, I, I think it's wonderful. I think it's uh, uh, an opportunity to to uh, put yourself out there. I think it's an opportunity to engage with those people who uh, are running. You get different sorts of of postings from people who want to be MPs. So, you know, you get the prime minister. A lot of it is done by his office. Mm -hmm. Get fellows like me mm -hmm. uh, who who do their own. You know, and, and but but that's a good engagement tool. So I'm, I've always referred to social media, Twitter in particular, as democracy in a pocket. What do you think of Cameron Slater? I, d I don't think of Cameron Slater. I mean, you, know, <laughs> you must think something of no, it. He's look, having a huge impact on, on the whole oh, no, thing, the actually, whole landscape, well, especially the Nationals landscape. Well, have a look at this. It's, it's interesting that a lot of people say that. The, the DigiPoll a couple of days ago, who lost? OK, National came down to 50%. He went down 8.5? Yeah, but how Labour, who want to be government, um, actually dropped a couple of points too. And they're down in the doldrums in the mid-twenties. I mean, this has got to be a huge worry for Labour, more than it is for National. Do you agree with that, Willie? Well, it's probably been the worst seven days of uh, John Key's um, political life. Probably Toe's worst seven days too, after his prediction last week that uh, <laughs> we wouldn't be talking about it this week. Uh, it's just getting worse and worse for the for the right. A big wet dream, and, and, and for the National uh, Party. If you watch the polls, he Toe puts a spin on it, but the, they're trending downwards, and, and the and the, nat, and the Nats are very very worried because it gets worse by the day. And you heard all the PR people like Toe, oh, I'll be gone. You know, it's no big deal. Hag is a conspiracy theorist. All this sort of stuff, but. Th Things are starting to stack up. Key, for the first time, because he's a master controller, has lost control. And so this week, today, they've got their uh, launch out yeah, in South Auckland. And Monaco, why in South Auckland? Oh, that's your turf, South Auckland. Why is National well, he doesn't South, live in South Auckland? Auckland. Good, good on them. Good on them for going there. I mean, it is, it's Labour territory, actually. That's, that's the reality. But he, look, look, this is about trying to regain control. Get back to policy. Let's get off Cameron Slater. You know, is a hacker going to win this election? That's what Key's saying now. Very clever stuff. I mean, he's in desperate territory. Nearly caught out by Goth, not mm. quite. I wouldn't call him a liar, but, geez, it doesn't look good, does it? It doesn't look good in terms of mm. what happened with the SIS stuff. And in, as Tone knows, in Parliament, you know, there's a, a protocol, there's an etiquette that you take a man by his word, and it, it, maybe that's where we're going. And exactly what Toe just said a little while back, just, just a short moment ago, he said the Greens have climbed, the popularity of the Greens, Greens have the, climbed the, because have. of all this. Yeah. Dion, is that significant, the Greens climbing? Yes, it is. I think it is significant. And, um, well, they're ta taking Labour's vote, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, that's right. They're taking Labour's vote. So, I mean, as a proportion, yeah, the, I mean, not much is changing on the left and the right and all that sort of nonsense. But it's sort of, hopefully, if, yeah, it, so you're getting a changing within, within the left. But, I mean, so, yeah, the Greens' advantage is, is Labour. So, like, Toe is right. I mean, they will be, Labour oh, itself will be worried. It's the little, it's, 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 the, thing, uh, it's the small well, parties. Here's the yeah, thing, hopefully, Scotty. yeah, it's the small parties that will benefit from these, from this, here's the this thing, current Scotty. distraction. Mm. If you're a left-wing voter, and, 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 you know, who cares, but if you're a left-wing voter and if you wanted a progressive team to vote for, boy, I'd be, I'd be voting Greens yeah. straight away mm. because of the turmoil not only in politics, but also in the Labour camp as I'd well. I'd be voting Māori Party. Well, well <laughs> can, I, can I just say, that their, their, their vote's going to go somewhere, right? Labour, <laughs> Toe is right, Labour will be tremendously disappointed they're not picking up on it. But there's still four weeks to go. Mm -hmm. I think they will pick up on it, and I think Internet Mana will pick up on it, mm -hmm. and I think the Greens will come back. So this, this book is all about dirty politics, and a book that's written about clean politics is not going to be a bestseller at all, oh, but no, no, no. on, on a rating scale... <laughs> on why a would you buy it? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, why would you buy it? What, 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 on a Rating between one and ten, say so yes. say so one is, is Padu is and yeah, yeah. ten is sparkling clean. Yeah, yeah. Willie, Maori politics and Maori political figures, how yeah. would you gauge them? 
Ha, sorry. Uh, if one and ten, one and ten in terms of, you know, uh, Look, I think, how would you gauge the Māori political scene? Well, one and ten. Are, are we clean, squeaky clean? Well, or well, are we well, not? Well, no, I think we are. And Tony knows this as well as anyone too. No, I think we're into it. I, I mean, I, are we going to get? Well, this? no, I won't because actually you've been rejected by Māori dumb. So we'll, we'll if take someone that. started thinking, well, at least no one. At least no one. If someone, <laughs> no, someone no, started thinking around in all the Māori politicians' emails, etc., yes, etc., yes. what would they would they oh, find? Oh, I don't think you'll find it, it, too much like what, what what you're seeing there. One thing you and you, you must agree with us: the Māori. Māori Party and Mana, they do try and play it straight, you know, even though they go at each other. But what you see from the Tūrūrūs, Tarianas and, and Hones, you see them front on, you see the scraps, you see them on to cut it with you. Mm. You know, you see the kānohi, the kānohi. I, I think there is a bit of a, a different protocol, mm. tikanga. Mm. Toe's been down that line too you with too Dover. Agree? I'd yeah. agree with that. Yeah. I think they, they certainly, I mean, they, they're not friends, obviously, in terms yeah. of like they attack one another's yeah. positions yeah. about... Um, yeah, who well, they the, align with yeah. and things like that, but it, it hasn't seemed to have got the Māori party. Nasty, the Māori uh, party is sensitive. Well, very good, gentlemen. Yeah. We shall continue this agree conversation with that, okay. next week. <laughs> well, at least I won a seat. Though, <laughs> isn't it was in there for 15 years. Not like one term wonder. Yeah, yeah but okay, no, but, but you were rejected. You know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Vote Compass is an educational tool designed to stimulate voter engagement, and with more than 300,000 eligible voters still not signed up, it's a good idea to check it out. It's been available at onenews.co.nz Vote Compass for a week, and more than 200,000 people have responded to its public policy questions. Early days, but of that, 12% were of Māori descent, and of that, there's no surprise that more women than men have participated. But what's interesting is the fact that a sizable 30% of Māori in the 18 to 29 age group have taken part. So sign up to see where you fit in the political landscape, and we'll keep you informed on what the Compass reveals as we head towards Election Day. Now, New Zealand Fashion Week kicks off tomorrow and media will be flocking to find the next breakthrough designs. But fashion can be found where you least expect it. And Kane Peters met an underground Māori designer who literally creates clothes with his hands. Being adopted and growing up poor, you had to learn how to either mend your own clothes or make your own clothes. As a kid in primary school, we were given wool and hessian. When I tried to work with the machine, we had issues. So David relied on his hands to do the work. And that's when I discovered that hand sewing was more of an art. And you get to feel the material when you work with it. And I think that's more important, like potters and clay. Same thing with material. Oh, 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 oh. With Wellington as his backdrop, David weaves his fashion on his clients. Kia ora, David. Hello, how are you? So I decided to check out how he works his magic. What I'm going to do is take you through the process of what I do. I hand sew only, so I'm going to put you into a jacket that hasn't been cut yet. Using a needle, cotton and a big pair of scissors, <laughs> David shows me how he upcycles a suit jacket. Oh yeah, I'm not nervous at all with those big scissors <laughs> <laughs> that close to my body. And from this one piece of flat garment, I'm going to actually make it more three-dimensional. That's where the upcycling comes in. A tie, off-cut material, and there you have it. Only in partial completion. The turn round, you'll see the collar. He calls these jackets suits of armour. And then after this, I'm going to take you on to the completed piece. These are called pauldrons. And these are to deflect the gel. Oh, oh. Yes. Wow. <laughs> How much would this jacket cost somebody? I charge between 200 and 400. Suits do take around two to three days each. So, you know, two, two to four hundred dollars is nothing, really, absolutely nothing. Later on, we're going to go through a bit more of a public show. So this is what I hope you'll be wearing. And of course, I've got other models as well. And we're all both Māori and Pākehā, but and so was the mix. Are you saying you want me in the show? Yes, tonight. <laughs> OK, cool. <laughs> Wellington's eco fashion show sets the scene for designers like David. This is my first time in a fashion show. Uh, I need some help with... How do you walk down a catwalk? Uh, it's my first time as well, but um, practising in the kitchen this afternoon is just walk with confidence and just kind of wear the clothes. What are your tips? Uh, yeah, just let the, let the clothes do the work, I think. So, the main things I got from that were walk with confidence, wear the clothes. 
Okay, well, let's see how it goes. David's work is underground fashion. When I first launched, I realised that it was not the right, or not the right way to go and enter into regular fashion shows because they didn't get us. They didn't know what we were about. Fashion used to be the same as art. It used to develop. It used to progress. It used to be ugly. It used to be the only thing that people wanted on the on the planet. What do you ladies think of his designs? I love the workmanship. I think it's. I, d I just loved it. It was my favourite because I could see all the detail. And he should so, so be doing like costumes for um, films and that sort of thing because, yeah, he's really talented. It kind of took me by surprise, actually. I was, like, Why is that? I wasn't really expecting the kind of, I don't know, that really, really strong theme coming through. I loved his work. Oh, gosh, it almost reminded me of... A cross between Adamant and Mad Max, or I can't even find the references, but I just think he's very, very creative, very, very innovative. Hand sewn by David Royal. Fashion that'll continue to challenge others to dress outside the norm. Get your sexy hair. Kane looks super cool. He's done um, a fashion show before. Yeah, and I know David <laughs> Royal, very creative. All right, that's it from us uh, for today. Thanks for joining us. Mihana kia koutou i tahuri mai tēnei ata, ngā manaki tanga o te wā, kia koutou katoa. Thank you.